I had a deal with uh, TNA in uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, a three-year deal, and um, I had, I was getting paid X amount for 75 matches a year. Thanks for the two bucks. Who do you who did you want to drop the TNA championship to? Was there anybody in particular be like, I could have dropped the title to him and that would have been cool? Hmm, that's a good question. Um I'll be damned. I'm trying to I mean it's I I think Maybe there might be an answer to your question. Maybe. I think I might have felt that way, but I'm not sure right now. I'm trying to think, like, I, I'm trying to remember, honestly, like, who's, who was on the roster. I know there was, like, James Storm. I think Sabu was gone towards the end, I, you know. Um, but um, I think AJ was around. And, um, AJ, yep. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. Uh, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian. um Hmm. I'm trying to think who else was there. From the guy who did drop it to. Um, I should have thought of his name. I should have thought of his name before I said that. Um, vacated. Someone, it says, he, I think you vacated it. Is that what happened? Oh, yeah, I did that. You know what? What did I do? Get two titles? So it said it? the championship was vacated due to Rob Van Dam suffering a storyline. Oh, a storyline injury. This episode aired on a tape delay on August 19, 2010. So I didn't know it was a storyline injury. Yeah, they had like Janice like rip me open like I was filleted like portable. Oh, yeah. People thought I was dead. Some of them bought it. You were like, oh my god, I was crying. They got they killed RVD. What the hell? It's a horror yeah. movie, huh? Yeah, AJ would have been a good one. That you guys like just his style, and he was still like you know up and coming at the time as a top TNA star. So. Um, he would have been cool. Daniel would have been neat. I'm, I'm trying to, to I'm really, it's hard for me to think of like who all w w was there, you know, so that, that's the reason it's hard to answer. But I think that maybe I might have felt, you know, I don't know. I mean, I was working with Abyss, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, I could have, it could have went that way too. Bobby Roode, he was. He was still kind of cutting his teeth there. He was cutting his teeth. James Storm, I love James Storm, so he would have been cool. I always think they, I always thought he was really under you. I would have rather kept the title though. Yeah, that would have been nice. I think. You know, why do you have to give it up, right? You could have just gone on a Bruno San Martino run or whatever. Well, yeah. By the way, just in case people don't know what happened, I had a deal with uh, TNA in uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, a three-year deal, and um, I had, I was getting paid X amount mm -hmm. for 75 matches a year. If I went over the 75 matches, then I would get paid at a per rate, um, at this, at that rate per match afterwards. And what happened on a particular year is we went over the 75 matches and they were uh, continuing to book me and I was feeling good. And I was like, I'm just going to keep, keep getting this money and I'm not going to say anything, you know? And, and it went on for a couple of weeks, whatever. And then somebody noticed and they said, Oh shit, you know, we gotta, we gotta fucking uh, take a break. What they would do is boom stop the contract for that year and then we would continue again into year two you know when when that was ready to kick in like after the uh after the first of the year so in order to stop my my contract and, and suddenly end all storylines or anything to do with me they decided to just show me backstage um all bloody and and sliced up from janice trying to put the heat on abyss and took me off in an ambulance ride and and then the thing that was really funny about that was then a couple months later when it was time to start 
the the fresh 75 matches for contract year number two i went back right in and had like some gauze like wrapped around my forearm or something like i just like healed had plastic surgery and and uh and some you know healed like superman in the yellow sun i guess that's so weird what a weird decision to make like let's bloody him up with janice and then take him out <laughs> oh fuck we ran out we were paying attention to the contract <laughs> Yeah, that's funny shit. Yeah, and I knew. I think I were on match 82 or something like that, and I was like, sweet, let's just keep it coming, let's man. Let's keep rolling, baby. You know, in Dude. WWE, I worked way many more matches for the same amount of money. Yeah, right? <laughs> way more. 72 matches wouldn't have been a year in WWE. It would have been a, a short two months, right? No, yeah. 60 days and two months, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess in, in three months, we would have done, let's see, if we did, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, if we did like, I guess we did roughly 20, 25 matches a month, probably in uh, WWE. So basically, anyway, in three months in WWE, um, I would have had about the same amount of matches as I would have had in 12 months in TNA after I left WWE and then in 2007 and then turned up in TNA in 2010 and the money was very comparable on the on the on the annual on the on you know on the annual so it was it was much less work you know for for the same money so just like i always say life just keeps getting better and better and better and it's all a perspective of how you look at the narration that you tell yourself but for me i've always been right and so there's never been a reason to think anything but that's it man that's it lady nisa thanks for the five bucks she says please talk about how someone can go from yoga to deep stretching are there any deep stretching fitness influences you would recommend no, there's not. Um, I don't know uh, other like instructors or anybody to mention. You know, all I know is DDP, and I know yeah. DDP has a great uh, track record. I know he helps a lot of people, and he has some really cool programs. Um, he was doing something where he would get up every morning. I don't know if he's still doing this or not, probably knowing him. And, and he would do um, a session live on his app so everyone everywhere could do it with him. And he would do that a couple times a day. And, you know, but outside of that, I don't know because I didn't do a lot of studying. A lot of my studying, almost all of it was internal. So it was just me. You know, I, I learned a little bit about stretching in like health and fitness class and in, in gym class, things like that, followed up with it. Uh, I learned that when you're building muscle, you're creating a um, hypertrophy situation. So your muscle fibers will swell and that because they're bigger, they'll take up more space within your joints and so I was told that I, I need to stretch to counter that. Otherwise, I'll lose flexibility as I pack on muscle. I learned that way back in high school. It became very important to me. And I just always, always stretched. You know, when I got into martial arts, that was a big part of what they do. And, you know, I, I wanted to be able to do the splits. So I had that um, desire that made me want to work at it. Um, I always like taught myself in the same way that I taught myself gymnastics. You know, I couldn't tell you anything about gymnastics because I taught myself how to do flips on a trampoline and on a diving board. And then eventually um, I was like, I saw this little girl do it first off of a fence post. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, you know, if I'm going to land feet first anyway, What's the matter if it's water or the ground? And I started doing it off everything. And uh, me and Dango both. But 
can't talk a lot about instructions because you know I was I was self taught and with stretching, it's such an inner experience. Uh, what I learned is it's all about relaxing, and if you're not relaxing, then you're not doing it right. It's not supposed. And I sweat when I go through my whole stretch routine. I go head to toe. I don't really stretch my head, but I do pull my head and stretch my neck. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's in different angles, but what, in different angles, like uh, I do everything standing up and then I do like a, 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 from a deep squatted position and then I, I sit and I have all these stretches. I do everything I do to the left side, then I do it to the right afterwards, you know, just or the other way around. I have a standing position, the deep squatted position. I have a sitting position on the ground. Then I have a laying on my back position on the ground. Then I have a split position on the ground, which that one's kind of limited. I just kind of touch, you know, my toes and reach forward and kind of get up over it and stuff. Um, and then I have a face down, ass up um, position where I'm on my stomach, on my chest, on the ground, stretching. Uh, and um, when I go through all of that and, and all the stretches that I have in each position, you know, it takes like an hour and I am sweating afterwards. It's a workout, not a warm up, but it's, it's relaxing is the key, though, because I have to use certain muscles in order to let other muscles relax. Mm -hmm. It's a form of self spotting. So so in other words, like if I squat down uh, and, and I'm really over like. If I'm if I'm over like one of my feet that's squatted and my other leg is kind of extended out there, uh, if I really want to relax my hamstring that's extended, all of my weight has to be on that foot, and then I can put my hands down on each side of my leg and make like a tripod, and then but I have to know enough to transfer the weight to that completely so that the intended muscle can relax. There's really a lot to it. It's positional. There's also a movement. There's breathing. There's um, what I'm focusing on. And, but the most important thing is not contracting the muscle that you want to stretch, but in fact, doing the opposite and relaxing it. Yeah. Relaxing is key. Breathing is key. Uh, yeah. I, I really couldn't tell you. If Rob can't tell you too, I definitely can't. But I do can attest for DDP yoga and stuff like that and how great that is. And that really makes you focus on your body and certain muscle groups and everything like that. It's big. He's really big into concentrating on that and dynamic resistance. So I, See, I would love to, in contrast to DDP's uh, style, I would love to have an RVD stretch routine and say, hey, look, this is – what I do before my matches, I've been doing it for 30 years. I got a longer career than anybody because I'm the toughest motherfucker. It's because of this stretch routine right here. Bam. But it's such an internal thing, and there's so much going on that not only do I not know how to explain it, but it's contradictive if I try to talk while I'm doing it. DDP, on the other hand, <laughs> he wants you to scream and count, you he know. Does. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's quite so different. Count it down. Yeah. Three, two, one. Bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on, suck it in. Come on, count. Count with me. Ten. Yeah, that's like part of the intensity of it. His. Is. Yeah, it's it's cool. Super cool. But I don't know. Um, it's just different from what I do. Man, yes. Different different strokes for different folks. Um one of a kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience.